Thank you, Brian. Yes, 12 rounds left starting tonight. A defining dozen ahead of the playoffs. So huge for both sides this evening, arguably more so for Jake Connors Huddersfield. Six adrift from the top six. They can't afford to lose many more. But the Wolves in fourth also needing to return to some solid form after a few shaky weeks. Could go either way for them yet. Jack Smith, the referee. Liam Moore is the video referee. It's going to be Stefan Rutchford who will start events here tonight for the Wolves. John Wells alongside. How are you expecting this to go tonight? Yeah, well, just listen to the comments from the, the guys at pitch side. I, I tend to agree with, with Sam. I, I think you're going to see rejuvenated Warrington side. I, I, I think the wobble is over. I thought they showed a, a great deal of backbone uh, to, to come away with the, the victory no, we'll against uh, against Hull FC. Th there's some star players here that I'm there. really looking forward to seeing this evening, and, and chief among those uh, is Matt Duffy. He's been a standout player for Warrington, in my hold, opinion, this year. Hold, Wobbly Wolves or Jelly Giants is uh, definitely the scene set then for this Three one. And Huddersfield hold in early go, possession. Go, go, go. Reminder that they've got a young winger on debut tonight, Aidan McGowan, but there's a bit of a, a throwback to what was happening last week. Handling mistakes being made inside, or a couple of weeks ago, I should say. Handling mistakes being made already here. And Warrington gifted early possession and position. Geez, you're a harsh critic. I'd say that's an outstanding shot early on from Lachlan Fitzgibbon. Got right underneath the rib cage and dislodged the ball. You know, that's a statement of intent from the back rower. You've got to hold on to the ball, John. You've got to keep hold of the ball. I'm sure that'll be going through his mind at the moment. So Warrington with six attempts to have a go at this Huddersfield line and inside that Giants half as well. This is Williams, who's going to be dragged to the ground. And Walker having a little look around as well. Harrison lining up. Oh, it's gone beyond him and into the hands of Horn. A bit of a late and deft duck from Harrison and Walker's in there again and the numbers are coming right here for Warrington there's only three to the left and they're not using it as a foil they are trying to build up that numerical advantage taken in again by Harrison inside the 10 three tackles to go Warrington looking for an early strike Vaughan will push and push and gets himself over and inside the opening two minutes it is Warrington who strike first, Paul Vautaborn, the man who munches up the metres in the middle of the park, has just proved to be unstoppable that close to the line. Second carry on the set for Paul Vaughan. We talked about Lachlan Fitzgibbon making a statement of intent in defence. Well, there's a marker laid down in attack as well. This may be a tough evening for the, Warri uh, for the Huddersfield Giants. Great shot on Rushton from Lachlan Fitzgibbon, set up the position. Late movement I like from George Williams and Matt Dufty out the back. I reckon that caught a couple of Huddersfield defenders eyes, but you've got to do better. You've got full contact with Paul Vaughan. We know he's good in terms of post-contact meters, powerful through the hips, great drive, good determination, brilliant start for the Wolves. First try of the season for Paul Vaughan as well. We've seen him some impressive displays in uh, making plenty of ground at time, but well, he likes it, doesn't he? He likes it. Early impact. He could score a few himself in his time, couldn't he, Sam? Joe Greenwood around the goal line. Did, did you feel it just gone early in the inside? So Paul Vaughan, a man from Australia, with well, an impressive like debut year last year, didn't he? And uh, again this year, he's been very often a standout player when Warrington have been on top. When the pack has been going forward with some menace, he's very much the, the spearhead of that. And Stefan Ratchford now with a chance to add two. A little jiggle of the hips and step on the toes. And a look at the target ahead of him. What a start this is going to be for the Warrington Wolves. More or less perfect. Through the sticks, six points to nil. And with Huddersfield barely laid hand on ball, they find themselves behind already. Yeah, and Steph Ratchford, one of the better for the boot, isn't he? Converted Paul Vaughan's try. It's a great shift play, wide ball to Josh Drinkwater, and then just shortened up to Paul Vaughan, who crashes over, taking two Giants players with him, and a kiss for the crowd as well. It's, a, it's an outstanding start for Warrington. They've shown a ruthless edge there in the opening couple of minutes of the game. Italian World Cup hero, wasn't he as well, Paul Vaughan, in 2013 and 2017. And here comes Harrison to bring it forward. Walker 
He's on hips again, looking for what's coming, and it's coming in the shape of Toby King. Looking for the big yards. Yeah, just an interesting one, just looking how the teams are lining up. Toby King, we know him, uh, we know him as a centre, and a high-quality centre, operating on the left wing this evening. Connor Wrench preferring the right centre. Roderick Ty, usually a centre out on the wing. I'm sure there's method in the madness. It's, it's not what I would have picked, but... Here's Vaughan again. He's, uh, he's got the taste for it tonight, certainly. Warrington again advancing towards the halfway line. And it's with Dufty, fresh from that exhilarating finish he produced against Catalan a couple of weeks ago, against Hull, I should say, a couple of weeks ago. The ball is high, and uh, it's going to be taken very safely by Elliot Wallace, but Huddersfield have to start within sight of their own goal line. Yeah, good set after points as well. A little a couple of details in there. It's been picked up by a few commentators previous in this season. Matt Dufty, the fullback, very often the penultimate carry, gets a quick play, the ball allows George Williams to kick off the front foot, and a good kick chase. Over here, carting it back on the inside again, and Greenwood with a push, and that is a good carry from the put forward. He's got some good metres there, despite three Warrington defenders trying their very best to stop him. This is Lola Hale, and here comes Connor with a little bit of a double pump. But Warrington's defence is not fine now, and closing in quickly on Holsall to make a stop. And then Connor will kick, and it's Dufty who's well positioned, anticipating the flight. And having a look back and to see if there is an honesty in that Huddersfield defence, there is. So he's stopped there. Yeah, there'll be a massive game plan around Matt Dufty. I mean, looking at the, the individual statistics for him this season, top try scorer, top for try assists, top for line breaks, top for line break assists, top for tackle busts, top for run metres for the Warrington Wolves. He's clearly their danger man. Here's Walker spinning it out. It's uh, going to be a carry this time by Curry, who's well met. Oh, must be a, showing, sure that showing some real integrity in defence at the moment. Making sure that Warrington are not making too many easy yards, but here comes Ford again with a little bit of footwork. Squeezes a couple of extra steps into that effort and onto the last now. Drinkwater left-footed, putting it very high in the air. And here's uh, the young debutant. Aidan McGowan, who's uh, been on loan this year at the Bradford Bulls and talking to a couple of people at the Bulls this week, they say he will not let Huddersfield down. They've been very impressed with the way he's been playing, mainly at full-back for Bradford, but can play on the wing as well. Yeah, and people, people actually say I'm surprised that the Giants haven't called him back sooner, given the, uh, the difficulties they'd had with consistency in the full-back position at Huddersfield. This is Bibby. Three, Putting his head through and uh, trying to push again. Milner's there. Doesn't look to that left hand side. Lola here again. Towards the line. Connor's joining in and a little bit of a dummy. And he's, uh, he's dragged down by Williams. And Huddersfield again. Kicking. Certainly inside the 40 there. This is uh, looking like a decent kick from Lola here. I don't think it's going to have the legs. It's not. King's back there. And Duffy will pick it up again. But Huddersfield's chase again is good. And so, therefore, the, the go forward is limited. Yeah, that's better from Huddersfield also as well. You know, we talked about Toby King, unaccustomed to that wing position. It's a very technical position, because we've got to be switched on and read the play at all times. Lola here's good kick into space there and, and forced a, a scurry back. Ratchford. Forward again. A bit of a lull around this stadium at the moment. Decent crowd in here. Kids for a quid tonight as well. Trying to encourage the local youngsters to come and watch their local team. There's Walker, lines up and finds Harrison, and Harrison carts it in, but it's the shoulder of Greenwood that meets him first. And down he goes, just inside enemy territory and on the fifth. So here comes the last, and Drinkwater left-footed. Will kick it high, Connor just needs to get a bit of a sprint on to get there. He maybe misjudged the initial flight, but he certainly got there in the end safely enough. And Huddersfield start here again. We're on a bit of, a, bit of a, an arm wrestle at the moment, John. Yeah, just settling to the rhythm, settling to the flow of the game. Warrington look comfortable. They're doing a good job of restricting the Giants' meters as well. It's the long raking kicks from the Giants. They've got them out of trouble so far. Here's McGowan again. Looking his way forward. Milner's there. Picks up. Looking left. Greenwood on its way. Yates with a push. But not going much further. And Milner. Lining up at dummy half again. He's got Levette to his left-hand side. He's going back down the middle, and Greenwood with a little twist and a turn. But entangled by those eager Warrington Icky. limbs. And Icky then the kick Milner. on the back Luke. of that from Adam Clue. And King underneath it, safely patched. And back he comes. 
six one way, six the other. But it's an offload for Ty, and Ty will try to put the step on, but Mansfield have him enveloped. And down he goes. Williams back in the inside again. This time it's with Coleridge. Jenna Brooks, what news have you down on the sidelines? Good evening, Woodsy. Wellesley mentioned it before, Toby King playing on the wing, which we're not used to seeing him out there. I just spoke to assistant coach Gary Chambers, and he said it's a definite tactical switch. They're looking to conserve Toby's energy a little and use his size and strength as a bit of an attacking force tonight. Yeah, they've got a couple of inches. Obviously, Thewlis and Ashton both out injured tonight. Come here, Sam. Come here, mate. So that's, hold, uh, that's hold forced the coach's it. hand in that respect. And here's Dufty taking it forward again. Move now! Walker's Back having here. a look. Go five. Now he collects. Now he shifts it back to Williams. Williams with a right foot sticks it high in the air. Connor's underneath five. it. They're chasing after it. The gallop is on, but play on, play up on. goes Connor. Comes down safely again. Held. Really? They're testing what? each other with a over test. Goal, goal, goal. Not been for that early try. It's a well balanced game here at the moment, John. Yeah, there is. I'm looking in the backfield. There's an issue for, for Jake Bibby in the backfield as well. He's involved in the in the chase back, doesn't look comfortable at the moment. Huddersfield Giants, we know, have been to the mill in terms of injuries and illness. And they do not at this early stage in the game want another one added to that list. But only won once of their last eight games in all competitions, Huddersfield. So we need to find some very good form very soon. Thomas kick, potential 2040, but never really troubling the touchline. And Dufty picks it up again, and the footwork is on here. He's a danger. He's a problem if you're trying to defend, but they get to him in the end safely enough. He's so good to watch. Oh, look, his meters from kick returns are brilliant. I mean, the entire back three for Warrington have been great all season. That really takes the pressure off the forwards. Well, this is an improvement from Warrington, isn't it? Because two tackles gone, they're already inside their opponent's half, and Wrench will carry it further here. So, at the end of this, they should be in an attacking position. Through boots or hands, we shall see. Drink water with a short pass. It looks as though it could have been forward. It has been knocked on. And uh, Bibby will pick it up and Huddersfield have it back. So things were not equal in respect to Warrington's attack and Huddersfield. Yeah, and Lachlan Fitzgibbon's come out the other side of that one as well. Not looking great. Holding the shoulder, but he's rejoining out of our picture the defensive line. Huddersfield down to business. They come into this left-hand side an awful lot, aren't they? Putting a lot of traffic in between George Williams and Connor Wrench. Two. And that you good now, Daddy, puts it again good. on Lola Hare, and Lola Hare scoots it back to Clune, Clune with a dummy, and then the step, but Wrench has got him covered, and he's, he's got help there as well from Vaughan. And it's back with Lola Hare. This is uh, Yates, the redoubtable Luke Yates. He just keeps pushing, he just keeps pushing, and he's got his feet tangled up now, so has to take the floor and then play the ball. Milner out to Clune. This is Connor again with a double pump, but again it's not effective in baffling that Warrington defence. Radford's down and in, and that's a super attempt at the tackle. And tries to get to Connor as well there before he can get the kick away. Put a bit of pressure on it, ties caught. Stand now, one. That's it. That's where he has to start from. Well, that's the best position Huddersfield have started a second so far. Well, this is dangerous at the moment from Warrington's point of view, and Huddersfield trying to turn it on, but tackle two, and they're on their own goal line. And that's uh, that's a concern, isn't it? Jenna, what news have you got on that? I can tell you that Lachlan Fitzgibbon has just been subbed. He looks like he's in a bit of pain. He kept grabbing his chest. Uh, Adam Holroyd has come on for him. Of course, Lachlan Fitzgibbon hasn't played since uh, before Wembley, has he? He's been out with a back injury. Well, I'll get a, a firm answer on exactly what this injury is, but he's just gone straight down the tunnel. Yeah, it looked to me just he, he came right through the tackle when Josh Drinkwater passed him the short ball. He's obviously caught something on the way through there. So Huddersfield back with ball in hand. First, yeah, this is the tackle. Ball. So it's a short ball from Drinkwater and just catches and lands awkwardly on that shoulder. Surrender. Stand up to. This is Clue who's marching back into that dummy half position. Now Bibby looking to straighten things up. Jake Bibby Third, away, just George inside stay. Warrington's hold, half of things, a wriggle on. and a wrestle to get himself up. So taken on again by Ika Hahifa with the offload and the bat away from Milner. And now things are beginning to happen, but Connor can't connect. And he's having a bit of a word with his teammates as well. Connor and also just having a conversation. Good. 
nick of that. Well, I, th I think that's it's the, it's the right ball, and I, I think I think his wingman has missed the, missed the jump there. There's definitely the right pass option. You know, we, we know Connor to be a firebrand. He doesn't mind telling his players when he feels he's letting down. I think Connor's in the right there. That was a real opportunity. But instead, it's Warrington who get possession back again here. If you weren't with us early, you missed that second-minute try from Paul Vaughan. Since then, not too much to report, is there, on both sides? Go to, you've made it, Joe, you're good. Here's Williams, two, trying to make two, a bit of a difference. Drinkwater two, a dufty rather goal, with a quick third. pass, but... Lynch is caught in possession. Goal third. And Walker now back to Williams again. Curry, kick. Drinkwater puts the Tackle kick over three. the top, and King's on the chase in anticipation of that. And that is wonderful. That is super. Slick and really well executed. And Tony King on the end of that lovely little kick creating something out of nothing. Really well set up, opened the field up. Huddersfield Giants responsible for covering an awful lot of space. It clearly opened up and played for, and we got the answer from the touchline as to why Toby King was being sat on the wing. Tactical decision, they said. Drinkwater spots his man up in the line. It's the, the debutant, Ada McGowan. And he just lost sight for a second of Toby King. He kept his discipline in terms of position out there on the wing. He doesn't have to break stride. It's a beautifully weighted kick from Drinkwater. And a relatively easy try for the Warrington Wolves. That would be my worry. I think if I was Ian Watson, the Wolves are not having to work particularly hard for points at the moment. Everything about that suggested that everybody in that move knew what was coming at the end of it. That Drinkwater was going to kick. King was off, wasn't he? He knew. Yeah, he was off. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, just, and just look, when it looks easy, you know, you generally, you, you've seen a, a breaking system from a defence, which I don't think you saw there, or something that every single player was on board with, and that would be a concern for Ian Watson. Oh, looks a little bit too easy. Well, this is the, uh, the Sky Sports and Stats Perform kick predictor. Stefan Ratchford given a 73% success probability here, which is pretty high, no, given the position, but that represents... His goal-kicking career, how well, he's, successful he's been. He's, he's 25 from 30 this season, is Steph Ratchford. He's a sharp shooter. You'd back him in from here, based on that. Big uh, intake of breath, and here he comes. Very fluid motion, and look at that. Look at that, absolutely bubble. <laughs> Could not have been struck any better than that. And 12 points to nil. Warrington lead here. 17 minutes gone and almost no sweat expended so far. Yeah, just out the back from Curry and Drinkwater picks his spot. Plenty of time. I think the key thing about that was just the, the waiting of the kick. The time afforded to Drinkwater. The, the pass back from Curry gives Drinkwater time. And Toby King finishes off well. Do with the ball back on the inside and Harrison will move you through. Remember, we heard in the build-up um, from Ian Watson that there's, there's some strife being suffered from Huddersfield at the moment with illness and bug going through the camp over the last couple of weeks, which is why they've maybe not got the, the personnel out there. Adam Swift in the middle of that, he's, uh, he's got a groin injury, hasn't he? Long-term one, but several other players who would have been uh, on duty tonight not available because of that bug, which just makes it a little bit more difficult for this Huddersfield team. Yeah, well, including you two best players, in my opinion, Adam Swift has been excellent, and so has Ethan Masters. Uh, you know, he's had a, a, a stellar season so far, so he's sorely missed the both of them. And Ethan Masters with a knee injury, isn't he? He's not one of the bugged, be bugged the people. He's got a knee injury and he's out for a few weeks, we're told, so that's not great. Meantime, Warrington continued their intent and uh, desperately trying to get his arms free was Matty Nicholson, but he couldn't do so, and that will be a handover. Yeah, well wrapped up by Sam Halsall, was aware that it was the last tackle. George Williams perhaps overplaying a little. As they've been, they, they've been pretty much flawless so far, the Warrington Wolves. Joe Greenwood's not looking over healthy at the moment. He's had a bit of treatment on the field, but I'm stretched to suggest that, that he's going to be OK from the physio, so we shall see. And here's Wallace, Elliot Wallace, one of the, uh, the new signings this year. It is a, it is a team very much for Ian Watson designed these days. Three. Taken Three in again by Luke Yates. Yeah. This Goal is three. Milner. Yeah, you go, James. Clunes to his right-hand side. They're coming at angles. 
They're coming with a little bit of power, but it's going no further than that. So Huddersfield with a couple of tackles left in the back here. A couple of plays to go. Clune puts it back to Lola Hare. Lola Hare switches to Connor. Connor now puts a little bit of pace on, but it's, um, it stops in the hands of Sam Holsall. Warrington's defence shifting across effectively. This is the last. Lola Hare looks for that corner again. Holsall puts a little grubber in, but um, Williams is there. Very safe there, the And Warrington have it back again. Yeah, good patient defending on the right edge. Connor Edge operating the centre. Oh, dear me. Roderick Ty has just poleaxed. Seb Ikahihifo, I think it is. And immediately the Huddersfield drop forward, reel backwards out of that tackle. I think a decision's been made that an interject is going to be needed on the back of that. Hugo Salabia ready to come on. Yeah, I think we could tell that from here, couldn't we? That was, I don't, I don't know whether it was heading the wrong place or... Timing coming into the tackle, man. You've come in, you've not affected speed, and come he's, back out. He's don't sitting come in that up way. a little here on his there, elbows, yeah. so yeah, yeah. hopefully that reflects that he's, uh, he's going to be OK. Yeah. Yeah. For two tries so far, yeah. both for Warrington. Yeah. First from uh, well, Paul Vaughan in only the second minute, yeah. his first yeah. try yeah. of Listen the season. <laughs> Well, here was the first try for the Warrington Wolves. It came in the shape of Paul Vaughan. Great build-up play. Long pass from dummy half. Short ball from Drinkwater. Great power from Vaughan. And then on 15 minutes, Drinkwater again with his second, second assist in the first 15 minutes of the game. Perfectly weighted kick straight into the chest of Toby King. And he finishes both converted by Steph Ratchford 12-0 as we see Seb Ikahihifo uh, getting back to his feet. It's like they've had to pick him up in installments it was some some collision two big powerful men was he well he's striding off here but obviously he's gone off for an hia it's relatively loose limbed as he walks away to the sidelines but there's uh, the crash bang wallop to the head which means for the next 15 minutes he'll be under the doctor's watchful eye to decide whether he can come back on again it's the irresistible force against the immovable object I think wasn't it Roderick Ty caught the upper arm of Roderick Ty in the side of the head well he's okay what's all the fuss about he's wondering let's get the game going again and Hugo Salabio has um, as we anticipated come on instead of Ica Hehipa and Warrington in possession but deep inside their own uh, 20 meters at the moment this is where Huddersfield are rather keen to keep them if they can Four. Move that lads. Stay here. Come on. Go for. Here's Walker. There's an advancement of sorts here that's uh, creeping towards five, the halfway line. Now. Walker's Stand up and having go a five. look again at the boot of Dufty. Back it comes Four, to Drinkwater, who puts it high in the air. This is a test of a young guy that's not reaching on the fall. And in fact, it's Bibby who's uh, favourite to get there, but Ratchford knocks it back. It's still the sixth tackle. And Huddersfield looking to respond here, and Huddersfield get it back. So a bit of a scramble to their defensive attitude has given them position inside the Warrington half. Yeah, miscued kick from Josh Drinkwater. Never really tied it up by the Warrington Wolves. And the Dolby left slightly ajar here. And the first real kind of error in judgment and execution as Plume goes short side. He's a dangerous player, isn't he? A little bit of a buzz there, a little bit of a skip in his step as he took it forward. But not too far before Warrington hands grappled hold of him and put him down. Salabia now with an early chance to put a dent now, in that three, Warrington line. Hold Daddy, you got the way you go. Into position again now. It's Clune up to the line and back to Lola oh, Hare. Right. And here comes Connor who puts it out. And this time he does connect with a winger. A step back on the inside again from Wallace who well, tries to keep that ball alive and all that happens is that Walker drops on it and Warrington had it back. Yeah, two great things to admire there, both sides of the ball. Adam Clune digging right into the line to commit Warrington defenders. But then in turn, the Warrington scramble, that right edge scramble, working as one unit, working together, stuffing out the danger. 12-0, two scoring explosions as you, as you like. Find this line, go! That's going to step back on the inside. No, it's, a, it's a good recovery, is that from Roderick Tight? Oh, Hold, stay, Hugo! Go! Here's Walker. Oh. Out back. Curry. Vaughan again. Just pushing and pushing, and look where he caught the ball, and look where he lands. Ten metres. 
So it means on this last play, Williams has a bit more of an advantageous position to put that kick in. It's not gone out of play. Connor will pick it up and has a look straight away back on the inside, but they're chasing him and they're chasing him hard. Jenna, what news? Yeah, Woodsy, Lachlan Fitzgibbon, given we saw K uh, come off the pitch with an injury a few minutes ago. Well, I can confirm it's a shoulder injury. To what extent the doctor uh, is still assessing him, they're not quite sure, but very doubtful that he will be back. Of course, Bad News, he uh, suffered a back injury in that Wembley game, in that cup final, that Warrington loss. So hopefully it's nothing too serious. Thank you, Jenna. Well, a few injuries at the moment, Warrington, but you look at it every squad at the moment and they'll point to the injuries to key five, players five, and key personnel 14, here's connor with a, a cute little kick but oh, the cuteness disappears once it lands in the hands of dufty because that's uh, a return almost back to the 40 meter mark yeah look and yeah, I, i'm i'm part of the matt dufty fan club i think it's the area of the game that he's most improved with i think his, his position in defense we always knew right from the start and seen him play for st george as well how electric he was in possession I think as he's as he's developed as a player in Two, Super League, his positional play defensively covers the ground so well. There are folks of a certain age who cannot hear the words Dufty fan club Sir, without thinking about looking left and field, looking right before they cross the road. Completely lost on me. <laughs> completely lost on me. <laughs> You're not of that age. You're not of that age. But if you know, you know, as they say. Anyway, Four. Warrington together, inside the Huddersfield's half. Go Walker on. is. Uh, looking for drink water and Williams is forced into a quick pass that McGowan just had heart beating there as a potential intercept but it is second best for Huddersfield because they will get it back here because it's out of play yeah last couple of possessions just just loosened off a little bit from the Warrington Wolves just an overplay from George Williams there the shanked kick from Josh Drinkwater the set before the the Warrington Wolves if they settle down into rhythm I don't think Huddersfield can go set for set the, the opening 15 minutes is proof of that Maybe going away from script just a little bit there. Look, sure, somebody of that calibre is going to be given artistic license, isn't he? But I'm not sure it's necessary. So 60 minutes of the half still to play here. Warrington looking uh, relatively comfortable on the scoreboard, and you can see there's not a lot of action elsewhere at the moment. St. Helens no Castle. Likewise, in the Battle of the Borough, Wigan against Lee. There's a Wigan Saints matchup coming up soon, isn't there, next week? Oh, that's brilliant from Greenwood, really good. And makes the break and tries to step Dufty, but Dufty had chance to line him up and bring him down. But Huddersfield are going forward, that's the main thing from their point of view. Lola Hea throws it back. This is Clue stepping away, looks to that left flank again. Lola Hea tries to draw in three defenders, Levet with a pass away. And here comes the push again from Holsall. Just short, not far. Not far Go short. Four. So a loop back towards Lola here. Here's Clune. They're trying to create some numbers here. Yeah, Connor four. slides a kick in. I think it might have taken a deflection there. And Ratchford yeah, has touched it down. Ratchford. And it will be a drop out underneath the stick. So the best set in attack. Huddersfield have had so Yeah, long. better from Huddersfield. This is where Jake Connor is at his very best. The disguise kick as well. Looked, looked to the corner, Shot just dropped Josh. it in square. And forced Des Fratchard into a, a scramble back to ground the ball, which he does. Probable repeat set for the Huddersfield Let's Giants. Go, and they've got to spend some time down this area of the field, haven't they, Dave? Shot Precious ball. little opportunity to unleash their attacking weapons. Water with a drop, Lola Hale with a catch, and here comes Salabia with a big <laughs> slam forward. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the ooze from the fans on the terraces. Nobody wanted to be in the middle of that. As it's taken on again. Milner now has Clune to his right-hand side. Clune now. There's no way through again. Warrington's defence mean at the moment, tight at the moment. Not willing to concede. Back to Clune again. Lola Hare joining in. Uh, oh, it's, a, it's an ambitious pass to Levet, who was almost in the hands of the defender when it was aimed at him. And as a result, Warrington escaped the peril. Yeah, just too much on it from Tulala here. You thought maybe the option was out the back there to Jake Connor. Jake Connor had options outside him. Too much mustard on the pass, and Harvey Levet cannot gather that one in. 
the six points are driven at the top six, as we mentioned earlier. A potential scenario where they could be eight points adrift of the top six Huddersfield at the end of this weekend. And then there's only 11 games to go, and, and suddenly it's beginning to look more like mission impossible than mission improbable as it stands at the moment, making the playoffs. Yeah, this, this group of players have been well aware that they've underperformed to date this season. And they will have to up the ante a little bit if they're going to uh, contest those uh, remaining places. I personally think the top three are locked up. I think there's, there's, there's three up for grabs. And we're hearing news, by the way, that Seb Ikehipo has uh, perhaps unsurprisingly failed his HIA. So that's him gone for the night. So they each lost the forward. You'd imagine for the evening because uh, Fitzgibbon with a shoulder injury. That looked as though it was a game ended, didn't it? Yeah, and Seb, Seb Ikehipo's a, a loss. He's been an ever-present for, for Huddersfield this season. He'll miss next week's game as well after that failed HIA. That's automatic protocol these days. That's a big one as well next week. They play Lee. That's a testing kick for McGowan, and a crunch. <laughs> Welcome to Super League. He's been running around impressively in the championship with Bradford. But uh, he's in a big time now. Wigan leading, 8-0 at Lee, uh, sorry, at home to Lee. There's a breakthrough there. Still 0-0 as far as we know, St. Helens Cass. And the referee's not happy with a play the ball here, I don't think. Yeah, he's indicating he's not regained his feet to play the ball properly. No balance of control, he needs to regain his feet. It's the ball to Brown that gives that away, isn't it? After the ball's disappeared behind him. Yeah, this is, the, this is what the boys were talking about pitch side before the game. It's those, because I would classify that as an unforced error. It's entirely within Jake Bibby's control. He could just slow that down a little bit. Let's play and the rush to get a quick play, the ball is giving away possession effectively. So here come Warrington again, and we, we know from history of this game that in this position, they convert it into points. Can they do it again here right now? Musgrove from the interchange bench will take them close. Powell, who's also appeared from that interchange bench, in at dummy half. Curry now angling in, push back, offloads. Williams picks up, skips immediately with an attacking intent and a duck and a dive. But Yates ain't gonna let go. They ain't going any further. So they start again with their thinking. Powell. So drink water, and again, it's that delicate left foot, and uh, McGowan's taking no chances, and pushes it dead for a drop out underneath the sticks. Yeah, smart play from Josh Drinkwater midway through the set. Not an awful lot on a reset, so again, they'll force Huddersfield into a decision. This will be interesting what Huddersfield do here. And we know the popularity these days of the short dropout. Jake, Guys, uh, Jake Connor. All stay! He's certainly got that any, hasn't he? Sure well, it's, it's an opportunity to wrestle back possession because they haven't been doing an awful lot with no. it, but no, they've gone deep. They're going to back the defence for another set. They've gone orthodox. They've gone the old-fashioned route. And here, in a similar old-fashioned route for a big man like Musgrove, is a charge First, forward. Move now, Jake! And takes his side oh, to within about 28 metres of on. where they want to finish at some point in this set. Where have you oh, gone? Right. Stay with me, Harry. Is down Go to. and up, and Powell collects and uses Musgrove to his through. right hand side to advance on, the course. And Six Warrington are close again here Elio. in a back to back. Back it comes, Dufty, Dufty puts on the skids and makes things happen. And Connor Wrench is there to finish it all. Magical from Matt Dufty and Wrench with a simple end product. And that is Warrington's third try of the night. 16-0 they lead now. Yeah, and it's, when they fall back into shape, that, that's when it looks simple for them. When they try and overplay, that's when it that's when it comes undone for Warrington. They, they've got some brilliant attacking structures, some brilliant shapes that are causing real problems for Huddersfield Giant defenders, particularly on these edges. Ball spread, right, nice wide ball again, pulling defenders out of shape. It was Holsall that time that decided he was going to try and solve the problem early on and created another one further out wide. It's the depth of the pass, and then once it's in the hands of Dufty, he waits for the opposition to blink and puts Connor Wrench through. Yeah, look, you've got to be really good, haven't you? If you're going to come out the line on George Williams, one of the best catch and pass exponents in the game, you've got to shut the ball down. It was a day late and a dollar short, and Connor Wrench crosses for Warrington's yeah, third try. Oh, 
Again, and as, as soon as Duffy puts his skids on, and the Philly defenders are off balance, didn't know where they were going, did they? It was um, it was panic stations. Ross Warrington remained calm. And here's Ratchford looking for his third success of the night. Club captain, not an automatic starter these days, Stefan Ratchford, but still such a valuable member of that Warrington squad, isn't it? Well, this is what you talk about injuries at this time of the season. This is where it's invaluable to have squad depth. And, you know, that's, that's a fair pick, isn't it, for someone who maybe slipped down on the pecking order a little bit in 2024. 81% chance of kicking this. Here we go, all in green. Here it goes, here it goes, and in it curls. And uh, the artificial intelligence is spot on, as is Ratchford's right boot, and it's 18 it's points to nil. Yeah, Connor Wrench playing in the centres, he's had a disrupted season as well. Great ball from Sam Powell, and then once Household comes out of the line, the options are laid bare for Matt Dufty. And more often than not these days, he picks the right one. One of the local lads as well, isn't he, Connor Wrench? I know Warrington are big on really promoting youth from here on in. He's a Wollstone lad as a kid, so one of their own, as they would say. And Warrington back in possession. It's not been easy tonight. I mean, Huddersfield have, have been resistant, but they've just they've suddenly appeared at 18 points to nil. Well, I just think Warrington have been ruthless when they've got in that area of the field, and, and when they stick to their systems, their attacking shape and structure has been too hard for Huddersfield to handle. And I'm going to throw a stat here that's going to worry Huddersfield fans. From positions where Huddersfield have been losing at half-time, only once this season have they been able to overcome a half-time deficit. That doesn't bode well. This is Dufty. Skidding in. Wellington measuring up again here. See if they can... Uncloth okay, this uh, Huddersfield defence. It's Wallace underneath it, but um, he's immediately under pressure. And again, the Giants starting from yeah, right within close right. proximity to that home oh, line. And my word, the shoulders are flying in. It was that Ty, I think, Roderick Ty, who made the initial contact there. Musgrove wasn't far away either. Yeah, Musgrove's come in from the outs, coming from three out, and stuck his shoulder right into Sam Halsall. Well, they're going wide, they're going wide this time, Huddersfield, with good reason. You don't blame them, do you? <laughs> I think North South looks a bit painful at the moment. This is a fair oh. shot. And it's a fair shot as well. Watch an early kick. Well, they went wide right. Now they're looking wider left as Clune gets it onto Lola here, looking to stretch this Warrington defence. Wallace steps, but every step that they went one way, Warrington's defence followed them with effectiveness. Ty with the tackle and um, Lola here just belts that ball away. It's, it's not going to be a 40 20, even if it went out of play, and it doesn't. Dufty spikes up in the air. Decent chase here by the uh, Huddersfield First, defenders. Still some intent Luke. there. Still some character there about this Giants chase. And now it's King. Pushing. Held! Release Russell. Tom! Sabio tears away from it. Young Deacon's on as well. Away, Tom, come on. Made his debut earlier this season against uh, London. Thomas Deacon, the 19, uh, number 19 Held. on his shield, if he's spotted. Release! Three. Another is making oh, his way. Go. This is Vaughan. Deacon's there again. Held! Release now for uh, Stanley Paul. You stay where you the, are. The grand Go. nephew of Peter Deacon, you might Paul, remember, from the Bradford Bulls. The man behind the scenes at the Bradford Bulls who made magic Five, happen four. at the start of Super League in terms of Five, marketing and commercialisation of the game. Five. This is Ty. And Five. Ty! Brilliant stuff, and Ranch chases Levette as well. I mean, he changes. He was perfectly within his right there, Harvey Levette, but he, he did a really good good job of sticking his backside in Connor Wrench's ribs to make sure he wasn't chasing that with any effect. Yeah, absolutely. He used all his experience there, Harvey Levette, and I think the referee's made the right call, but now a penalty given away for offside from the Warrington Wolves. Just got a little bit quick there for a second. Now, this attacking set. For me, I, I think Adam Clue needs to get on the ball here a little bit Try more often. Well, He's deferring to Tui Lola here, who's come up with a couple of wayward passes, a couple of errant passes in attack. Adam Clue needs to take hold of this attacking set. Huddersfield need this. Yates takes it in. First, first play. Hold. 
So oh, you got what can Huddersfield build from here? St. Helens with that lead just before half time against Castleford by four points to nil. Two. Move to get them and Huddersfield, to they desperately One need to score goal. just before half time as well. Deacon swings it back towards the middle and Clune takes Stanley's it off. Go, and Lola here now throws it wide and Bibby appears there. Well, real determination, real enthusiasm, but oh, it bounces off his chest and towards safety Sorry. from Warrington's point of view. No, you just you, you can't fire balls when when players are uh, hitting lines against the grain like Bibby's doing there. You've got to take a little bit of weight off the pass. If there's a tactical change to make here, you would maybe even switch positions. You'd, you'd stick to Lola here as a first receiver and play Adam Clune, who looks to have a bit more finesse about what he's doing as the, as the second receiver there, a little bit wider out. Because that's twice now he's come up with those. And uh, well, the, the, the match starts with tell, tell you a tale, don't they? Warrington 56% possession. Got the completion rate as well. It's been it's been very competent yeah. from the Warrington Wolves and the meters. I mean, wow, that, you know, 700 meters in the in the first 40 minutes. Hold, trying to work out what they mean. This is uh, Musgrove. Who's tackled? 15 short of the halfway line. Have three. Warrington got another punch in them before 40. the Hooters sounds? Oh, that will kicks deep. To make sure that Huddersfield have to come from back play. If they're going to make anything happen here. Surrender. And Warrington are up there quickly to make sure it doesn't. And Connors hurt, holding the back of his head. And he's the kind of character that away fans, or home fans, I should say, opposition fans, quickly identify. And he's a, he's a proper pantomime villain, isn't he? Yeah, look, let, let, let's not discount that he might actually have have felt a, a crusher effect there in a tackle as Ian Watson looks on. It's a great kick chase, by the way, by Josh Drinkwater. Sam Powell got the kick away early, but Josh Drinkwater, somebody who was well and truly on the outer at Warrington earlier on the season. Leon Hayes Just preferred to him, of course, only got his reinstatement into the starting lineup following Leon's unfortunate injury. Uh, and I, I think he's he rejoined this first team with a point to prove, and his, his performances, the level of his performances, particularly those effort areas that we've just seen there really improved under Sam, Sam Burgess. Challenge Cup winner, of course, with Catalan back in 2018, Josh Drinkwater, so he's been around the big games in his time, is he? He's carrying on. Going to be involved in a big game for Warrington at the end of this year. Well, here's... Yeah, well, that's, yeah. I mean... Powell's coming over the top, isn't he? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, the video referee was going to have a look at this one, because that's... Yeah, yeah, they are. Cheers. Pick the ball up, tackle one. Well, obviously, no further action being taken. P Powell and Connor shook hands there as well, apparently. That means nothing in the middle of, <laughs> middle of, a, <laughs> middle of the game. So, Huddersfield looking to boom away from deep inside their own half. Running out of time in this first period. Running out of tackles. But they have a penalty, which might help them. So Lola Hay wants to take this quickly. They've got time for a full set of six on the back of this. They don't have to rush too much. Six more tackles with over a minute to play in this first half. The first half that you would you would describe, I think, certainly from Huddersfield's point of view, as, as bloodless. They, they, they haven't troubled the Warrington Wolves at all. This is Lola Hay and moving it on again to Levet. Well, they're travelling a little here. Two. What's that? Two tackles now, and they're within range, 30 metres of range. So another couple of players will put them in a very interesting position, but can they strike from deep here? Yates will take it in. Deacon in at dummy half. Back it comes to Clune, just to smuggle it between two, three defenders. Can't quite do so. So two to go. It's back with Connor again now, and Salabio, but... Nicholson just puts the, uh, the shoulder in and makes the tackle a good one. And this is the last play. Could very well be the last play of the half as well. Deacon. It's a, it's a little chip over the top from Rushton and a catch on the fall from King, who wants to turn this into an attacking opportunity with a tap restart quickly made. But Huddersfield's defence has got itself back. It's an offload. There's a fumble. Referee's not sure here. 
And now it's getting a bit feisty. And that might see us to the end of the half before the referee has to make a decision. Well, it is getting feisty. Well, that's as, that's as animated as Huddersfield have been in this first half. I've got to say, you know, you don't want to give, you don't want to give a team a, you know, a death rider team, but they, they've provided precious little in terms of attacking intent in this first 40 minutes. What they have offered has been very, very easily dealt with. It was a failed offload attempt from Toby King, scrapped out on the floor, and then a late flop that Matt Dufty took exception to. Well, it wasn't a flop, it hasn't been tackled, has it? Still a lot of tackling, aren't you? I mean, he was down on the floor on the ball, but there was nobody else touching him. Here's the quick tap from, from Toby King. Offload. So he's not tackled, so he's allowed to do that, isn't he? Dufty reacts. Surely that's in the rules of the game. Nice Salabio doesn't help matters. Well, our referee's just decided, and it's probably the best counsel to say, you know what, Boots has sounded, let's just go off at half-time and calm everything down. And Ian Watson might be wondering whether his side could have had a penalty from that, but we'll never know the answer to that, because that is the half-time call. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Dave Woods, John Wells, Jack Smith blows his whistle. We've seen enough, we've had enough. 40 minutes of Bedford Super League action between the Wolves and the Giants sees the home side away for Huddersfield back into this game and maybe keeping their season alive. I think they've got to defend exactly how Warrington did in the first quarter. They need more intent, they need more aggression, they need to be on the same page because if they can't defend this Warrington side, they're going to get no opportunities with the ball. Yeah, I'd just like to see Watson's team defend the line. You know, when they put under any pressure, they've crumbled and, and I just don't think you can do that and win any games. They've got some experienced players in their, in their team that know you need to defend the big moments and they just haven't done that. A big 40 minutes coming up for Jay Connor and the Huddersfield Giants. What about the Warrington Wolves? What was said at half time? Let's go put tunnel side to Jenna Brooks and find out. Jenna. Yeah, Warrington was a very happy dressing room at half time. Sam Burgess has just said more of the same, more of the same. Uh, as far as Ian Watson's, as you can imagine, not happy. He's asked his players uh, to complete their sets and to show some resilience on their try line. But it's time for the second half. Over to you, Woodsy and Wellesley. Well, there's a concern coach at the moment. They were out early, weren't they, the Giants? But it's uh, for this second half. Warrington coming out now a little belatedly. And there's uh, some joy in uh, in that coaching box at the moment. Warrington win tonight. And they're staying in touch, just about in touch, with the top two, aren't they? If St. Helens and Wigan win, which they are both at the moment, and you would expect them to kick on, who knows? But Warrington are doing what they need to do. But Huddersfield, I mean, what a desperately important... 40 minutes this is going to be. Yeah, I think this is a, a really significant 40 yeah, minutes in the context of their season. Warrington Wolves not been outside the top four since round four. The Giants have not troubled the top six since round eight. It's been a horrible run of results that sees them currently in eighth position. And listen to the generous summation of Ian Watson's halftime team talks. All right, being resilient on your own goal line, you're 18 points down, you need to score some points. Here's Bourne, the man who set things in motion in terms of scoring in that first half of the drive. Well, I mean, we, we, we built tonight as, as a probable must-win game for Huddersfield with games running out and points between them and the top six just beginning to grow a little, but if they don't win tonight, the next three, Lee away, Salford home, Leeds at home, and absolutely, they have to win all three. But in the meantime, they have to navigate this one, and at the moment, it's Warrington who are starting positively and looking in the mood again here as Dufty will carry it in. Powell's there, oh, a dummy go, half, go, last go, play, go, so go, it's go, off the boots of Drinkwater, who simply oh, puts it as high as he can, and Wallace has dropped it, the ball's on the ground, and Warrington will get the ball back. Not the start that Huddersfield needed, to say something remarkably obvious. Yeah, and he's had plenty to say as well as Elliot Wallace. It was an unconvincing, non-committal effort. And that's exactly the sort of stuff that the boys were talking about at half-time, and it's bled 
straight into the second half and into the opening minute or two of the second half and he, can t he cuts a frustrated figure but that's on him I'm afraid you've got to secure those Warrington are plotting and planning and full of enthusiasm and full of optimism again here 10 meters out where they pack it down so many options drink water goes right Wrench who's already scored one who's putting a bit of a step on but Huddersfield's defense maneuvering Making sure he goes no further, Powell picks up again, this is Vaughan who might fancy a brace tonight, got his first of the season in the first half, but not this time, not this time, Powell has to wait, a little patiently, back it comes, they're putting the big guns in there again in the shape of Musgrove, Powell, Vaughan goes behind him, taken on again, but um, Ben Curry's thwarted and he plays the ball, there's nobody there. Well, the referee has given the benefit of the doubt to Powell, but they've wasted a play, so they've only one left now, back to drink water. And here comes Williams, and Williams back on the inside, and Dufty, beautiful, beautiful. Unpick them, superbly, drink water, lingering on the inside, and for the second time, the footwork of Dufty has opened things off for a teammate. And Warrington have started where they left off, and they're already looking very comfortable now. Yeah, precision from the Warrington Wolves, and a clock off as well in defence from the Huddersfield Giants on the last tackle. You'll see that on the replay. But let's take a first look at just how crisp this attack is. Two wide balls, Dufty lurking on the inside. It's a knockoff in the middle from Salabi Arfield. Just broken his stride and opened the gap up for Dufty. Not really read the assignment, not seen the task ahead of him. And drink water already with two try assists this evening. Picks up a try as well. And as we, you can see from the graphic, his ninth consecutive appearance back from the wilderness into the starting lineup. So. This is going to be the uh, fourth success of the night, you would have thought, from Ratchford. It's a pretty impressive wide out, so right in front of the sticks. The sun's glaring a little at that end of the ground, but I don't think it will be uh, flashing in Ratchford's eyes at the moment. You can see there the sunset is beginning to happen, but I think Ratchford should be protected from that visually. Here he comes. And over it goes, and it's 24 points to nil. Well, how does the man who's invested millions in this club down the years feel at the moment? Ken Davy, the owner of Huddersfield Giants, has put so much effort and emotion into the Giants. He's had a Wembley, or rather a Tottenham appearance, hasn't he? A Challenge Cup final appearance, a lead leader's shield. Maybe not the return he would have hoped for for all that investment in all that time. Can they turn it around tonight? Here's Vaughan to bring it back. I mean, crumbs of comfort here, Wells. It is only crumbs of comfort, but they were in a similar position last week against Catalan and, and almost sneaked to win Huddersfield. So their giant supporters will still be thinking, well, maybe there's a chance. Here. Yeah, well, 22 points down at half time in the south of France and scored 18 and answered in the second half. Well, that myth's busted <laughs> straight away with Warrington's first score inside three minutes of the half and then marching the way upfield again. I think you look at the middles here, they've been exceptional, haven't they? Good early ball from Dufty. Thomas Deacon, by the way, has gone off the field for an HIA, so problems can see. Dufty's just asking, was I obstructed there? Yes, you were, so down he goes. Yeah, look at the middle forwards, I think. I mean, Dufty, not surprising, leads the meter counts, but Vaughan well over 100 metres. Uh, Musgrove oh, approaching 100 metres as well, he's been impressive off the bench. Nice play, Powell spins it left, this is Drinkwater again, inevitably it's off his left boot. It's um, going to be taken by McGowan who does well to slip Ratchford and win some decent yards there, that young fella. Aidan McGowan. This is Bibby. Clune's just having a look around in anticipation of when that ball comes out here. With uh, Deacon and uh, Milner both up the three field at the moment. Oh, no, no, Milner's here. Milner's here Go at Dummy Half. St. Hill is leading now by six points to nil. 
and Huddersfield Four, looking for a way back square. into their opponent's half is the first task here. Oh, goal. You're good, mate. Oh. This is Lola Hale. Oh. And now Clune, and now Connor, and now Bibby. And you you've mentioned those Five, names, Josh. and you think, well, they've got the attacking class, haven't good they? Way, Josh. With the players they've got, they're not putting it together, unfortunately. And that's a dreadful oh, kick. What was he trying there, Jay Connor? Well, they're doing themselves no favours because they're, they're, they're working on the fourth tackle to a touchline, which gives them very limited options on the fifth. They've done that a number of, on a number of occasions. One, Connor Wrench. This is Connor Wrench now receiving treatment. Well, they find themselves having to work their way off a sideline. And you're very limited in, in your, your scope there for your kick at the end of a set. Harvey, Sam, you give him a bit of space well, the best you can say about that was in, at least he tried something different, but Sorry. even that doesn't cover it really, does it? Yeah, he's cutting a frustrated figure, isn't he, Jake Connor? Well, there's no getting away from it. There's some talent in this side, isn't there? Yeah. You know, Lola here on his day is a, a brilliant broken field runner, Connor. Maverick status, we've attached to him on a number of occasions. Adam Clune, I think he's a fantastic rugby league player. But they're just not yeah, putting it together at the moment. Him, uh... Missing a few. I mean, Dufty uh, and uh, he needs to get into Masters, the game for me. Yeah. He needs to. He needs to. He needs to impose himself on the game. Connor Wrench leaving the field. He fell awkward with him receiving that catch from uh, from Jay Connor. And we hope that's not a serious one. This is the try celebration from Josh Drinkwater's previous try. Yeah, and he just uh, just steps and. And pings the knee, Tackle and I tell you, I'm not a doctor. Yeah, Josh, that's never a good ball. sign. Let's go. Time back up. Well, he's uh, eventually down the uh, into the dressing rooms to get some treatment, and here comes Roderick Ty. Move together, all. He's lost all his partner line. in crime. Ben Curry's gone out to. there. That's no big surprise. We're getting used to watching him down the middle this season, aren't we, Ben Curry? But there's enough in the tank of memory out. about playing Release. out wide. For him to step into that right centre's position relatively comfortably. Power puts it back on the inside again as Wallington begin Four. to make a bit of progress here. Hold, hold. There's a hush, there's a, a hushed expectation around the stadium. What's going to happen next? The Warrington are, are wrestling themselves into position, but they are running out of, of tackles again now. One to go. So Powell scoops it back again. Drink water. And Williams, Bans no look past the Dufty. Dufty with a kick, the chase is on. Connor should have it covered. And did he get a hand on that? I've got no, he didn't. Just no, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. What's the referee given here? So if he got a hand on that, why is it not a drop out underneath the sticks? No, no, he, he, he hasn't got a hand on it. It is a tap. But, but Jay Connor seems to be complaining Missed to the referee it. about that. I think he wanted to pick up and get on with it, and the referee said, no, you can't. I think that's the complaint from Jay Connor, wasn't it? Zero, move! Anyway. Right, seven tackle set they've got, so yeah, yeah. Look, they, should, they should end up here with being able to put a kick in the right area of the field, at least. Ollie Wilson's on the field. I think it's the first time we've seen him in the game off the interchange bench. He's been carrying a bit of a hamstring injury this week, so this field will be uh, relieved that he's got out there. And hoping that he keeps safe and fit throughout the rest of the game. England debut last week, of course, for Ollie Wilson. And here's Lola Heyer. Levette back on the inside. Huddersfield looking to build themselves back into this match if they can. One-handed pickup and a scoot by Milner. And they're now within 20 metres. And they do have tackles in the bag. Two to go. So what comes next? Left to Lola Heyer. Here's Connor, quick hands from him, quick hands as well, out to that left-hand side and Wallace, but he's being carried towards the touchline, and out of play, and it all comes to naught. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's more patient Warrington defence, but I'll say this, the Huddersfield attack is one-dimensional, they've got the right players in, in the right part of the field, but there's no depth, no shape, no options, not challenging the Warrington defence really, the Warrington defence are just waiting for the pass to be made, and then numbering off, mapping off, holding the player up and diffusing the attack, snuffing it out. Dufty Ty Nicholson involved there. Roderick Ty in Barcelona. particular. What have you made of him since Let's his son? Go. A bit left field, wasn't it, in close season for this year? But I've certainly been impressed with what I've seen of him so far. Yeah, I think, and, you know, as the, as the season progressed, I think he's, he's got better. Clearly, he's, in my opinion, he makes a better centre than a winger. 
but he, uh, he's, he's grown into the game. The faster tracks were always going to suit Roderick Ty, weren't they? Well, he might have just caught the fact that Casavet had got a, a score back against St. Helens, so they're making it difficult for uh, one of the sides hoping to make a grand final this year. Here's Dufty away to Curry. Surrender. Referee warns him that it was an obstruction there, so he takes the tattle. Cheers, Ben. And here comes Harrison, and Four. Jenna's got more news on the far side of the field, Jenna. Yeah, Dave, Thomas Deakin came off uh, not that long ago, actually, for a head injury assessment. I can tell you it was a Category 1 uh, concussion, so he has failed. Uh, he's the second player, isn't he, tonight, to fail their head injury assessment. So Biki Hihifo uh, went off in the first half. So that means that their 18th man has been activated. Jack Billington will be coming on and making his debut for the Huddersfield Giants. Well, I look forward to watching him. As uh, Jenna says, a debut. He's uh, come through the academy. He was really touted as a rugby union player. As in his younger days was, uh, was Jack, but chosen rugby league. Been on loan at Jewsbury this year, 10 games there. Was on loan at Barrow last year as well, so he's been picking some experience in the lower leagues. And tonight he gets a chance if needed. Yeah, I'm sure he will. Yeah, I'm sure he will get on at some point as well. Thomas Deakin, I think it was goal line defence. He was in the act of making a tackle prior to the Josh Drinkwater try. He reeled out the back of that one. Didn't look well. The doctor immediately on him. Ref referee had played on. He plays no further part. Drinkwater out to Curry. Curry now almost slips the tackle, but does slip the ball out. Drinkwater back again, and Powell has a look and sees if there's a gap there. If there was, it was quickly closed. So Warrington starting hold, hold again here, but in prime on, position. Well done, well done, well done. Looking for their second try in this second half. Musgrove Two. carries it in. Powell is Harry peeking Fox. around. Where's he going? Go Where's he going? Decision made. It's uh, back with Harrison. The blunderbuss approach, trying to force his way through. Huddersfield ain't going to let that happen. Powell again now. Skips it out to Williams. Williams creating a bit of mayhem, puts the kick in, and Nicholson with the chase. Wonderful stuff again. Has he got it down? Yes, he has, before anything went out of play. Measured again from the boot from Williams, and Nicholson electrically alert, and Warrington are up to 28 now. That was brilliant work. Great work from George Williams. Just waited for the gap to open up, had the patience. Martin Nicholson knows what George Williams is capable of and finishes off brilliantly well. Let's have a look at George Williams here, pre-play, number six on his back. Just look at him, wrong side of the rug, and very, very creepily sneaks his way into contention. That cannot be accounted for by the defensive line. And then a superb finish from Matty Nicholson, but it's a late movement, make no mistake about that. That's hard for an opposition defence. If you time it well, to communicate a number off in time. Take a look at him, just lurking on the wrong side of the rook. The timing's perfect, sneaks across, no adjustment from the Huddersfield the defence. And then just waits and bides his time and Nicholson through. And it, again, we've said it a couple of times, He's looking, he's looking all too easy for the Warrington Wolves. I think we caught a bit of news there from uh, from Jenna that uh, Toby King has gone off. Straight down the tunnel. So both sides have had a few issues on the injury front. Jenna's off to find much more. About Toby King, oh, 95 95% chance of kicking this, and he's 10 meters in from the touchline. I tell you, there's a reputation. Has a look, has a look, settles back and strikes it, and that's why that figure was as confident as it was. It's 30 points to nil now. Warrington are cruising. It's all about as many points as they can possibly gather because points difference might be an issue at the end of this year. I said before a ball was kicked in 2024, I think places are going to be decided on the ladder by points difference. Remember, the end of 2023, the top three was decided on points difference. You get an opportunity like this and you smell blood. Warrington expect them to put the foot on the throat. Short kick off by the Giants. But they're still going short, but Warrington have it back and staying in play, so it ain't happening at all at the moment. Curry comes up with the ball and Warrington start again here. 30 points to nil. Three tries in the first Wait. half, two in the second. Two. Move, Lee! 
and without the crowd having to get excited it's 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 not been a as we said in the first half not an easy night but it has been a straightforward night they, yeah they've made it straightforward and, and you look at all the key players to the fore Drinkwater two try assists Dufty two try assists George Williams a try assist the key players in the right place at the right time oh, great offload great from Harrison and here comes Walker and they're just ramping it up a bit this is a dangerous time for Huddersfield with 20 odd minutes to go Williams puts the kick in Dufty's after it the ball bounces Dufty scores back-to-back -back tries for the Warrington Wolves Dufty's created a few he might just have scored one hang on they're asking for the replay so let's hear from the video right. no try on the play. for the offside yeah the line calls try on ground in Liam onside offside no try Like this is even no try on field, so we'll look at Dufty, please. Let's just go back and pause it on the foot. Then go back again, please. So we have to have both feet behind the ball, Dufty. So if we can pause it, please, on the foot. Just go real slow. Yeah, go, pause it on the foot, just so we can see exactly where he is. Just pause it there. You can see Dufty has both feet behind the ball there. So I'm playing on from this point. So we're just on the grounding now. Both feet behind the ball, just on the contact, on the grounding. Something close to finish, please. So Dufty takes possession of the ball, takes possession, still in possession, and the ball is grounded. I made my decision. So try straight forward once you have that kind of position look at everything that happened. It's clear that it is a try. And it's 34 points to nil now, kick to come. Warrington are having a walking down. Yeah, it's a brilliant try, really well created, crafted by from the boot of George Williams. The timing, the combination between these two, Dufty and Williams, has been superb and has grown and developed as the season's progressed. You look at where Dufty positions himself, this was always going to be the play. It was set up and it was played for. And Dufty's had to navigate between Bibby and Clune who offered very little in terms of resistance and, and attempts to escort off the ball. It's a lovely weighted kick. You get the bounce and you make your own look, don't you? If you're prepared to make those efforts, you deserve the favourable bounce, you deserve the try. And Matt Dufty, yeah. with his 12th try yeah, we'll try of the Super League season. Cheers, Leo. Time, mate. He likes playing Huddersfield, made his debut against Huddersfield a couple of years ago. For this Warrington side, here's Ratchford looking for what would be his sixth success from six attempts. We don't need the AI indicator. I, I, no, I don't think so either. Cheers, Ray. This is one he, he can do a little twizzle and back heel it over, probably. He'll miss now, John. He'll miss now. Here we go. Ratchford puts it in. 36 points to nil. Warrington lead. And Jenna, what news on Toby King? Yeah, we, uh, well, you actually said that he came off uh, just a, a while, or not that long ago, actually. Uh, it's a hamstring injury. They're not quite sure at what extent he's currently icing it. Listen, given they're leading 36 nil, it's unlikely he'll return. Well, we, before the night began, Gildis and Ashton missing, and King now gone as well. That's uh, two, three, and five in the Warrington shirt numbers. So they'll be hoping it's not as not Surrender. as serious as it might be. Yeah, well, if it is a hamstring, they're, they're rarely one, one or two week issues though. So we, they may have to uh, battle on over the next uh, next three or four weeks in the absence of Toby King, who, who's been outstanding, I think, on his return to the Warrington did, Wolves. Did you ever pull a hamstring? I'm not sure you ran quickly enough. To... <laughs> I think I have them physiologically. I'm not sure I've ever pulled them. Warrington back in possession and in complete control here. 36 points to nil. The only is going round, but my goodness, there's still a bit of thump. Still a bit of hammer. That's a great shot from Andre Savellio. It's too little, too late, but it's a good shot. 40 20 attempts off the back of it. What's the bounce like? And it's kind for Connor, who uh, manages to skip past a couple of defenders as well and land his side in relative safety from that dangerous looking position. Start 30 away. Here's Wallace cutting back towards the middle. Two. Moves in, Sam! Make it, Adam! Go to. They cannot afford, they cannot afford to just 
three, lose their the heads here, Huddersfield, can they? As, as John was saying third, in the build-up, Huddersfield have suffered a lot of third. big, heavy defeats this year. Not just beaten, but beaten heavily. So this is a night where now they really four, have to show a bit of heart, don't they? Well, the, the, the game's gone for them. This is this is now about preserving a little bit of pride and building for, for next week. Andre Savelio has tried to show them the way forward in the last minute. Both sides of the ball, a crunching hit, followed by a great carry. This is Connor and Lola Heia and left again, but no further than Hull Saul. And that was a six tackle, so Warrington will get the ball back. 12 meters from their own line but again it's it's one dimensional you've, you've effectively got jake connor there playing as a as a six it, it gives them so fewer options on the outside no depth to the shape there's no there's no puzzle to solve well we've been going down to jenna a lot tonight because there's a lot of things to report and we're off again jenna yeah, Dave, it could be, uh, well, it looks like it's going to be a big win for Warrington, but it could be a costly one. Uh, we saw Connor Wrench go off. It is a knee injury. Thankfully, I'm being told it's not the knee that he has recently had issues with. It's the other knee. Uh, I mentioned before Toby King, uh, that hamstring injury, and then you've got Lachlan Gibbon as well has gone off with a shoulder injury tonight. Uh, so, yeah, a big win, but a costly one. Go for. Yeah, and just trying to work out the reshuffle. Curry and Ty on the right-hand side oh, as they fine. move it towards this left-hand side with Dufty. Pops Shut it off. back on the inside. Nicholson looks like he's playing left-centre at the moment to Ratchford on the wing. Yeah, well, Nicholson's athletic enough in the centre, and Ben Curry, of course, played in the centres uh, for England in the to test ben. against Tonga last week. So, go you know, they've got, they've, got a, they've got squad depth, but versatility too. This is Williams That's with a it. kick. Chase is on, Connors underneath it. Easy one for him, and uh, almost gets away, but Drinkwater oh, really just grabs job, really a fistful of shirt to, to drag him down. And this is McGowan Two. putting in a really good effort there. Go, gets up right. and plays it. And now Wallace, the man from the other wing, will try and help out. Third. Get his team as far down field as he possibly can. Go third. Milner. This is uh, Four, Savelio. Stays in. Four. Go. Sam. He's bolted up, isn't Sam he? Daft. Andre Savelli. Four. Lola Hayes passes uh, back backwards. Connor it. collects it. Four. Trying to keep things moving here, Huddersfield. Just uh, trying to produce something, but they're going right and left, and now they come right again to McGowan, who's got the footwork to get past Ratchford. Play on, play on, play on. And he's batting up as well from Five. the Holroyd no. tackle, but a yard or so yeah, taken. Good. Last Five. play. Lola Hair That's sticks five. that boot high in the air. Ties underneath it. They're advancing towards him, right, left, and centre. Try ties to take them on. First, the open square route. Elliot, find the line on his field. Williams. Go on. He's over there. Here comes Harrison. Wilson advanced. And the two England teammates two. Move, connecting together. Find me. Davidson's together Go last to. week, weren't they? Joe, come on. You're just going early, mate. So Warrington. We'll be Third. hoping to put more Move. points on here tonight if they can, but Huddersfield legs, desperate to dig deep, Hold. not get it, let it get any worse than it is at the moment. That's five and three. Drink water Williams. across to Williams. Williams with a miss that pass, and Ratchford's on the end of it. He ain't got a pace, has he? Oh, well, he's got a bit of weave, Four. a bit of dash, oh, but um, Sevilla's Go got a tackle. And now... It's um, last whole no. again. What last play? One play Four to go five. in this set. Walker picks it up. He's going to have a little bit of a look. Off the kicker. Tries to kick it over the top, Watch making this. things up as he plays there. And Connor with an easy catch, not a great finish from Warrington's point of view. Yeah, well, even the poor ends of the sets are working out all right for the, the Warrington Wolves, aren't they, at the moment? And if there is, you know, if there is a downside to what looks like a very convincing victory it is those injuries that we've referenced before Move. toby king to. connor wrench lachlan fitzgibbon none of those look like one week affairs surrender stand three find this six, line six, six, line six. we said we go said at Castleford a couple of weeks ago they're not going to make the uh, six but they're going to have a big impression on what three, happens in the six because of the way they're playing at the moment and that could be one of those and lee well hit. lee oh. needing points the and they're not off, far off trailing eight six up. against wigan going to be a scrum. Adam Clune just Warrington juggling ball. another ball from Tui Lola here. He, he's not got his radar right, has he, Tui, this evening. And Adam Clune has juggled that. Shot clock on. Referee a judge to Shot have knocked on and handed moment. possession straight back to the Warrington Wolves. The, the guys downside, downstairs 
pitch side before the game highlighted this, didn't they? They highlighted Huddersfield's lack of discipline in possession, the, the amount of unforced errors. They're racking up now for the Giants, nine of those. Well, as we say on a regular basis, every single game is live on Sky Sports this year, so there is some lively action across Sky's channels tonight. Warrington looking to build on what they've got here, but uh, Williams literally collared by Greenwood. Go on, you two clear, Joe! Just a little glance at the big screen there to see how well he was doing. Held! Move to! Two tackles gone, four to go in this set. Warrington with Powell with a no-look pass to Musgrove. Musgrove trying to muscle his way through. Yeah, he's been impressive this evening, Zane Musgrove. Big impact from the bench. Walker, drink water. Oh. Move Harvey. Less than Square 20 ball. away, but go for. running out of place here. Two to go. Drink water again. Back on the inside to Williams. Let's He's sort out and tackled well Make it by right. Yates. And this go will be five. the last. Drink water again. Again, it's a left foot dab. Ratchford's up there, and uh, he tries to That's knock forward. it. Tries to That's catch it, but has knocked it forward. And Huddersfield get it back in the corner. I think the Warrington fans feel he was uh, was ill-treated here, Stefan Rush. No, he's had, he's, he's had first crack at it and missed it. Yeah. And after that, really, I think he's irrelevant. Sorry, Sky, no, no. Surrender. Playing on the left wing tonight, he does uh, have international Warrington pedigree on the left wing, Stefan Rush. He played on the left wing for England against France in Perth a few Sam years Paul ago in the World Cup. And he played on the wing at Salford, I think, early in his career as well, didn't he? He's, uh, he's got a marvellous utility value. See, you've got to wait for a goal call. Hold, hold, go. Especially in this, uh, this le the autumn of his years as a rugby league player. You're just pushing on to him. Go third. Oh, Zero. bounces off the chest of Wilson. He's had a look Zero. round. He's looked round at Olsall as if to say, I think Milner, to say, why did you pass me that? He clearly wasn't expecting it. And immediate, immediately, Warrington are on the attack here, Rashford. Pushes away the attempted tackle, and he will score. Lethal. He's a lethal left winger, is Stefan. And that will take his side to 40 points with his kick to come. He's enjoying himself tonight, and even the coaches. He's not letting you completely aware of that. Sam, he's hiding the smile behind the hands, but at 40 points to nil, it's been a night of woe for the Giants and their coach. Oh, I'll tell you, what a lovely shimmy. Yes, he is in the twilight of his career, Steph Ratchford, but what a career in so many different positions. You talked about the versatility that he has in terms of where he can play. This again off the back of another unforced error from the Huddersfield Giants, becoming a real feature, unfortunately, of their game. And George Williams weighs up, skips across a couple of players. Dufty fires out a ball, and that's beautiful. Just a stop and go. And undoes Aidan McGowan for a 20-meter dash. Improves the angle a little bit for his own conversion, but I think that's the night summed up for the Huddersfield Giants. And they're now talking and waving their arms at one another. Great skip across into Duffy's hands. He passes on, and that's a nice little stop, go, fend. And 20, I'll cheat him out two meters there. 22 meters to the line. No conversation, nothing to say really at this stage. I know where it's going wrong. I ain't been able to fix it. Andre Cervelio's uh, having a chirp. But everybody else is just a look of gloom. It's the thousand yard stare from those Huddersfield Giants players who know that their season is quickly slipping away. The AI is having a field day here. 91% now for <laughs> Steph Ratchford. It's getting carried away. This would be seven out of seven if he kicks this. 34 for the season in all goal. competitions. Ah, never in any doubt, never in any doubt. 42 points to nil. And um, there's a bit of a record being chased here by Warrington. Biggest ever win against Huddersfield, 54 points to six. They're not far away from that, and there's still plenty of time to go with 13 minutes left on the clock. Oh, and that's, that's a nice one for the career highlights reel for Steph Ratchford. A personal haul of 18 points from those 42. 
and the Warrington Wolves are cruising. They are, I, I don't think they've had to get out of third gear this evening. Connor starts again. Duffy with a catch. Musgrove with the intent. First. Move together, Huddersfield! We're going to extend oh. their lead, 12 points to six. Second half, that one, of course. Two. Move it square! Make and it go, go. You go, Joe, you go. Are leading 8 6 at St. Helens. My goodness. Third. I mean, they, I mean, they've been turning things on Go in the last few weeks of Cass. Well, they, they don't forget they conceded 60 points. Oh, here's Musgrove chasing through. Who wants this? Williams wanted it. Zane. Powell wanted it. Dufty wanted it. Walker wanted it. Oh, None of them got it. Oh, Zane. But now it comes to Drinkwater. He puts a kick over the top, and Dufty's not going to miss out this time, is he? Yes, he is. McGowan's done well to make sure that that is shepherded out of play. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, Zane Musgrove's been perfect this evening. He's had four options there to pass, and he's got white light fever. Uh, ref it's going to be. Yeah, referee's call that the last contact has come from a Huddersfield Giants player, so it'll be a, another set for the Warrington Wolves. But tell you, look at the options that Zane Musgrove has here. Looks left, looks right. He has players either side and decides he wants to go straight over the top of Jake Connor. It's a 20 metre goal. It's a 20 restart, it's touched by Dufty. Oh, you're right. It's a 20 restart. Well, initially it was a drop out underneath the sticks, and as Huddersfield were doing that, the referees changed his mind and said, Dufty got the last touch, well, so it's a tap on the 20. I'll tell you what, as we were showing you the replay, Huddersfield actually performed the drop out, a short attempt that didn't go 10, so they've got away with one there. Go. Not that it makes a lot of difference, to be fair. First, move together! You know, look at the tries oh. here as early as the second oh, minute. Well, Matty, get away from then just ball. after the quarter hour mark, just before half time was Connor uh, 30 minutes was Connor Wrench's try. And then the second half didn't get much better for the Huddersfield Giants, did it? Drink water on 43. Nicholson Release. on the 53rd minute. Go. Dufty crossed on that beautiful kick on 56 from George Williams, and then Steph Ratchford with the, the latest try we've just seen Please. with 13 minutes to go. Good effort by Wilson, that it really was, and Milner ten, will pick it ten. up now. And they're, they're making the yards here, and they've got players on that left-hand side to finish it. Wallace has to cut back on the inside, because Warrington's defence recovering quickly and getting across there. Released for... They'll be desperate not to concede. Old cliche about keeping it to nil, but Greenwood batters it forward. One play to go. It's back with Clune. Oh, and he overstepped, overstepped. Oh, it's it's gone backwards, fine, though, so fine. it's still alive. And here's Connor, who spins it out to Bibby. And Bibby, well, he's, he's swarmed around. Before he can make a decision there, he's swarmed around. And it's a six tackle. They were dragging him out of play, but the rest says, well, you, don't, you need not bother, because it's a six tackle anyway, so you get the ball back, come what may. Yeah, the scramble defence from the Warrington Wolves has been outstanding. They've got a little bit loose there in the middle, a couple of good carries from Huddersfield, but... This, uh, the, the grit that Sam Tompkins talked about pre-game is, is really in evidence from the Warrington Wolves. They're bent but never broken. Well, they certainly haven't been this evening. A pristine zero that flatters their defensive prowess this evening. I'll cover that by saying that they've not had an awful lot thrown at them by Huddersfield. Another big moment for a young player, Maybe Jack Billington, yeah, about to make now, his debut. Started the night as 18th man, but there's a couple Stand of HIAs four, that have been Holly failed, have given him a rare and late opportunity. Five. Move now, Andre. Well, Wigan Stay looking, Luke. Go looking uh, a lot more comfortable now. And Liam Marshall, Outside, apparently the scorer of that latest try. And an absolutely brilliant try from him by all accounts as well. 20. That's going to play man. on the bounce without anybody Milner. touching. Yeah, we're hearing a, a, an acrobatic corner finish. Think Makins and think Ashton. Go and check that out on the highlights later. Yeah. Together, Every reason to stay with us at the end because uh, Goes, there's Matty Ashton in the stands looking on. Every reason to stay with us because uh, not just the analysis and the interviews, which will be very interesting at the end tonight, but all those um, all those highlights from the other games as well. And big, big weekend of action starting early, 10.30 tomorrow, the Cowboys against the Seagulls. 
Leeds against London 255 on Arena. It's a double header Surrender. because straight after that, Hawkins to Rovers, Catalan at five o'clock. Oh, I cannot think of any other sporting occasion that would eclipse what we've got to offer you tomorrow, that double header well, in Super League. Certainly not in terms of excitement no. from what we've seen so far. Here's four. Bibby, and uh, as so often happens, it's Salford who bring the curtain down on the weekend on the Josh, Sunday afternoon with their match against Hull. And the verdict and the bench, of course, available. Yeah, all the usual places and all the usual times. It's uh, Huddersfield who put it to ground. And Warrington are allowed to get up and play. And it's just so loose, zero. so Bring loose from Huddersfield again. It's just, Go you zero. know, timing, angles, weight of pass. They're going to have to go back to the drawing so board zero. and they're going to have to go fix this quick. Here comes Curry, setting face stuff from Warrington. They really look like they've enjoyed themselves this evening. Kids for a quid night, as we mentioned earlier, so a lot of kids will be in here, maybe for the first time watching live rugby league. And if they come here with a, a bit of Warrington in their hearts, they'll certainly leave impressed. Goal two. The Primrose and Blue have done well tonight. And I'll tell you what, the boys, the boys downstairs have got the job of picking a player of the match this evening. I, I would find that quite difficult. It's been an excellent team performance from Warrington. This is uh, Dufty, and Dufty's away. And he's got Roderick Ty, and Ty will zoom in on that right hand side and a bit of a flourish to finish things as well. That kind of a night for the Warrington Wolves. They're loving it. Party type atmosphere at the moment. Roderick Ty with yet another to add to his growing collection now. 46 points and eight different try scores. Yeah, eight tries. Eight different people have dotted the ball down. Matt Dufty, though, with his third try assist. I can't get enough watching this guy run in open space. Just sticks on the afterburners. Beats two defenders and then really unselfishly hands off to Roderick Ty, who improves the angle for the AI-assisted Stefan Ratchford, it seems, at times. It's great to watch. When they're in full flow and when this man is in full stride, they're irresistible, the Warrington Wolves. Photographers, get ready. There's the moment. There's the moment. I tell you, if someone's caught that, they've done well. But 46-0 with a kick to come. <coughs> well, they're making a case, aren't they? After all their travails of recent week, that the loss to Wigan, albeit in, in the league, albeit with a very young team, and then the, the real non-display against Wigan in the cup final, and yeah. then Salford here when they got taken apart. That was the, the jittery win against Hull. I'll give you, I'll give you a rebuttal to that. I think the Salford defeat here, I thought Salford played outstandingly well, and they, and they franked that form with a victory against Saints the following week. I think the the, the last ditch win against Hull FC has really galvanised this team and has maybe drawn a line under it. Well, clearly drawn a line under what many people was perceiving as a wobble. And here they are, ready to go 48 points to nil over a Huddersfield side that spends big, have recruited, have developed a side and have got zero to show for it. Well, there's a picture of glumness and here's a picture of a man who's had a spectacular night. This will be his eighth kick of the night, taking him to 20 points as a personal tally and over he goes, never in any doubt. Never in any doubt, 48 points to nil. Where does he go from here? Well, straight back over the M62, try and get a decent night's sleep, and then into the office, early doors. This will be a long and painful review session for this Huddersfield Giants side. And a penny for his thoughts as well. A brilliant custodian, long-term custodian of the Huddersfield Giants. And you feel for people who put their heart and soul into clubs like, like Ken Davey does. Well, this has been all over for some time, but my word, that uh, St. Helens game has been catching our eye. And that is full time. St. Helens 6, Castleford 8. What a, and hats off to Craig Lingard. I mean, at the start that Castleford had had to the season, and the last few weeks, that's top six form they're produced. They're not going to make the top six, but at the moment they're playing top six form. Two things. They were beaten by 60 at, at home <laughs> earlier earlier this season, the Castle Tigers by Saints. And Sam Wood, I think, arguably their best player of the season, is now out for the rest of the year with a, a, a serious shoulder injury picture for that international. 
That is a seismic result for the Tigers. And a reminder, you can you can see the highlights, the tries with Brian and, and Sam and John at the end of this game. Last It'll be well worth watching. I'll tell, well what, worth I'll tell you what else as well. Back-to-back -back defeats for St Helens doesn't happen often. You know, when you've got sides like the Warrington Wolves playing in the form that they're playing now, you know, a Warrington Wolves side, as we said, that have not been out of the top four since very, very early on in the season. Huddersfield aiming to avoid the ignominy of uh, conceding another try and a goal. If they do that, then that will be the biggest win Warrington have ever had. In terms of margin right. against the Giants in Super League. It's bad enough as it is. 40. 40. 20 attempt by Connor. Oh, it's not it's not bad, but it, it, it bounced it's about six inches inside the touchline, but over. the wrong side of the 20 Cut from his point of view. I'll tell you what, Warrington's win, Saints' his defeat. That really teases up nicely for tomorrow evening's game, doesn't it, for the Robins? There's massive incentive for them to put further pressure on, on St Helens. This is really warming up as the, the 2024 Andre. season enters the, the, the home stretch. Paul, it's come coming up a bit, tomorrow Paul. at 5 o'clock, as you can see, Sky Sports Arena, what preceded say, by ball, Leeds go, go. against London. Doubleheader. Okay, our the goal, is mouth-watering. I'm First. sure those who are involved in Headingley will be for the goal. hoping their Hold. game is mouth-watering as well. Isn't London it? looking for only their second win of the season. Leeds looking to build on that emotional Move. night they had a couple Hold. of weeks ago in Goal beating to. Lee. This is Walker. Left. To square Andre! Find this line on his field! Two and a half minutes to go. go Just first. under. Drink water. Powell and here comes Harrison for open square Walker go for back into that position of power the dummy half it all starts from there there's Vaughan literally throwing off Milner five finding further resistance from Yates as he takes it forward just wait, pal. hold go five a big grin on his face Luke Yates he enjoyed that tackle there's Drinkwater with a kick on the last five. McGowan's underneath it well done to him and uh, first. evading the first Nicholson's attempt, but getting caught Go by on. the next two. It's just like yep. speed is fine. Tidy work by McGowan in the corner. Two. Matty away from the ball! But this has been the story oh, of the game, two, hasn't Matty. it? It's ruthless efficiency, repetitive, high completion rate, putting Huddersfield in corners. These Ow! carries are tough. The really tough, four. the painful. Three. And Go. staring down the barrel of a 48-point defeat. And this is Yates. He's lost none of his oh. robustness as he brings so it in. Stand for last set that Huddersfield Go. will have ball Maybe on hands or even oh. hands on ball. This is uh, Greenwood ball who's uh, on flicked ball. it away, and Clune puts it over the top. That's good, that's bright, but then it got a little awful oh, as Holsall drops it. Well, the, that, that, that little cameo from Adam Clune, I've been well, you, you want 20 of those a game. I've seen so little of him. I think he's you know. He's a player with great vision. Yeah, uh, the pass may be a little yeah, high, but nah, no I, I think long. he's he has. Well, I want to say he's drifting in and out of the game. I don't think he's been in the game. <laughs> he's a player with clear quality, <laughs> and, and you you would ask serious Three, questions five, and say, look, you need, it, you need to you need to stamp yourself all over games. Right, he's deferring far boys. too Stay much at the ten. moment to Tuilola here and Jake Connor. Shot clock off, ball out! Walker. First, move Joe! Wellington fans in fine voice in the final 10 seconds of this emphatic victory. They might be after some more here. Ty puts the kick in. Connor should be there. It's an awkward bounce, but he has picked it up safely. The Hooter sounds in the background. And, um, well, Connor just flicks it up because is he injured there did he get an injury no he didn't look yates just looked at him a little dismissively on the back of that didn't he but anyway warrington with a big statement win here tonight they are looking up again at the three above them and putting the pressure on but is the sun that's setting now on huddersfield's season ian watson shaking hands with all the players on the sidelines and the backroom staff but it is a massive, massive mountain to climb if they are going to make the six. You rather think they aren't as things stands at the moment. Right. Full time here, 
Warrington winners by 48 points to nil. Dave, John, thank you very much. Never mind the sun setting on the Huddersfield Giants. It might be 10 past midnight for them and their hopes of making the top six in season 2024. A word first on the victors, the Warrington Wolves, Sam Tompkins and John Wilkin. You both spoke beforehand about what you wanted to see from them was ruthlessness in attack and a much improved miserly performance in defence. I think you got both. Exactly that. Exactly that. I think their attitude to defend today was outstanding. The intent they showed to try and restrict the yardage from, from the Huddersfield Giants was...